Well, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Steve Yan, and I am the uh, senior writer and editor at Behold Israel. I want to start off the evening by saying hello, shalom to uh, uh, Gary from Crosby, Texas, because every time I'm here, you are the first guy who pops up on that chat. Uh, so, Gary, it's great to see you. I'm looking forward to a great evening. Obviously, I am not Pastor Mike. Uh, as many of you know, Pastor Mike is a chaplain in uh, the military, and he's just finished his uh, uh, some time in service, and he is in the car driving uh, on back home. And uh, I talked with him uh, about an hour and a half ago, so he has about an hour and a half more uh, to get back home. Um, so uh, we wish him a, a safe drive, and... Uh, I'm just thrilled to be here tonight. Uh, I love these nights. I have such a passion uh, for the Word of God. Um, as uh, many of you know, I was a, a pastor for uh, quite a few years, and uh, I just love that was my the highlight of my week was studying the Word of God uh, each week in preparation uh, for my sermon. So that's what tonight is all about. Tonight is all about reading the Word of God out loud. It's a public reading of Scripture. Uh, a little bit of news. Um, the Canada tour has uh, completed, and uh, uh, you'll hear a little bit about that from uh, our uh, special guest uh, tonight. Um, but I want to let you know that uh, Mir made it back home to Israel safely. He got there this morning. He's exhausted, but... Uh, uh, everything I hear about uh, the the time in in Canada was was uh, very special. Uh, as uh, many of you know, um, the book uh, Reveal and Revelation is uh, is just selling like gangbusters. We're so excited! Uh, just the comments that we see, uh, particularly on Amazon, people saying, "I never really understood the book; it was confusing to me." But now that I've read Reveal and Revelation suddenly the book of revelation makes sense and that was really the goal i know that amir and and my dad uh, dr rick Yan, um th that was the, the the goal they had as they they put this book together so um we're very excited about that uh for those of you who uh, really enjoyed operation yachtan want to let you know that uh uh by way of deception the next book it's in the can uh, in other words, it's it's with the uh, it's with uh, Harvest House Publishers. It's ready to go, and it's going to be released in October. and And everything you're seeing that Amir is posting on his Telegram um, about uh, uh, what's happening with the Iranian uh, Iranian nuclear program that's what's the the book is all about. We're seeing this book uh, coming to life in the news already. Um, so, just wanted to give you that update. Uh, but now, I want to introduce you to a very uh, good friend of mine. As, as many of you know, the Behold Israel staff is spread all over the world, all over the United States, but then in Israel and even the Philippines. But this guy lives three minutes away from me. Um, and again, he's been a, a good friend for many years. Uh, this H.T. Novak. Uh, let's get you on here, H.T. H.T. Uh, Novak, the Director of Finance for Behold Israel. Good evening, H.T. Great Good to be here. Steve and everybody across the globe. Um, HG, I know that uh, you were part of the uh, uh, the Canada tour and uh, have just had a, a lot of great things uh, to say about uh, what you experienced uh, in each of the sites. Can you just give us just one story about uh, some special time uh, from the, the Canada tour? I don't know if I can give you just one, but I'll give you a couple uh, really quick. So <laughs> it, it was an amazing time. I, I mean, we had great reception from the crowds. E every place was packed. Every stop in um, Montreal, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver, everyone was packed out. So and then we had kind of a surprise one on Sunday. We had not announced at all that Amir was going to speak at all three services at um, the host church in Vancouver on Sunday. And as no, no, kind of normal for them, they're for, pretty full anyway, but they were absolutely packed every service. We had to push them out, bring them in, push them out, bring them in as fast as possible in, in Vancouver. So, but it was an amazing time. 
at, at every location, an invitation was given at the end of the, the speaking engagements and, and every place there were people who prayed to receive Christ. So what, you know, what an amazing time. And we, uh, we had a couple of particular ones, one in Calgary that uh, was a, a really special story with a lady that, that came up afterwards and everything and, and ended up praying to receive Jesus. And the uh, same thing happened in um, Vancouver as well. And then in, in Vancouver, we also had a, a funny story and it was a, a little blessing um, as well in that we are standing in the Vancouver airport and waiting for our bags to come around at baggage claim. And Amir and I are standing there talking and a gentleman steps in kind of between Amir and I, and he looks up at Amir and he says, are you Amir Sarfati? And Amir says, yes, I am. And then the gentleman introduced himself. He was Ken and his wife was Grace. And they happened to be people who were close, close friends of Steve's dad when he pastored the church in Winnipeg, Canada, right. and have remained friends all these years. So they they were, we were blessed and they were blessed to be able to meet Amir there. And then we, we put them right down front with us whenever we got to the um, speaking engagement on Saturday evening. So that was, that was a special blessing. So fantastic. That's great. And, and again, I just I want to thank all of you who are praying for the Canada tour. Um, as always, uh, when God's word is taught, lives change and people come into the kingdom and even believers learn, draw closer to God, gain that hope that comes from knowing God's plans uh, for the future, for eternity. Um, so thank you for all of your prayers uh, through that entire we and Steve, you know, another real blessing, too, was that Amir didn't know any of these host pastors at the four cities, if you will. Mm -hmm. And this was his first time to meet them. And it was as if they had met as long lost friends it is how quickly the relationships developed. So it was absolutely a God thing that that he connected us with the right churches, the right pastors to be able to go and spread God's good news. So yeah. it's easy to establish relationships when you start as family. Amen. Yep. Amen. Well, um, let's get, uh, let's get to the word here. HT before we start, would you open us up in prayer, please? Sure. <clears throat> Father, we just thank you for this time together. It's a, uh, Oh, what a blessed time it is. As Steve said, for us to just be able to open your word read your word we don't have to do any commentary we don't have to do anything except read what you have told us in your holy word and and because of it even though there's bad things of the internet and everything this is absolutely one of those blessing things is that by using social media and internet, we are able to reach people all over the world. As I, I can see looking at the side screen here now, we've got people from all over. As Steve said, the first gentleman's from Texas. There's lots of folks from Texas, from Oklahoma, from Australia, from New Zealand, from Philippines, from everywhere you can think of. And Father, that what a blessing that is to be online with all these folks and read your word. So I just pray that you will bless our time this evening and that this word will touch each of our hearts. Maybe it'll touch a heart that that is struggling with something right now and it will bring comfort to them or it may even bring them to come to know you. We just pray all this to get, uh, the, together that you'll spend the time with us this evening and that um, we will honor your word as we read in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We're going to be going through uh, Psalms uh, 141 through 146. And uh, uh, as uh, many of you know who are regulars here, we use the New King James uh, version. i uh, not saying all the others are bad. This is just what we use to unite all of us together so that we can all uh, follow along. Um, so uh, I'm going to begin with Psalm 141. A Psalm of David. Lord, I cry out to you. 
Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity, and do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me. It shall be a kindness. Let him rebuke me. It shall be as excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it. For still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked. Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff, and they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave, as when one plows and breaks up the earth. But my eyes are upon you, O God the Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me, and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, while I escape safely. Hmm. HT, if you want to go right on to 142. Yeah. <clears throat> Psalm 142, a contemplation of David, a prayer when he was in the cave. So for those of you who have been to Israel before, I'm sure you have seen one of those caves at En Gedi. So this, this will be special for you. I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make supplication. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path. In the way in which I walk, they have secretly set a snare for me. Look on my right hand and see, and there is no one who acknowledges me. Refuge has failed me. No one cares for my soul. I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me, for you shall deal bountifully with me. Well, H.G., is there anything that uh, stood out to you in either of those psalms? You know, we in this one in 142, we all know the story of David in the cave and so forth, and Saul chasing after him and everything. But, uh, you know, it's and we know the story of God saying in other places in Scripture that David is a man after my own heart. But we see right here that David is just like any of the rest of us. Mm -hmm. I, man, Lord, make my, I'm making my supplication to you. I'm giving you my complaints. I'm telling you my troubles. But. Thank goodness, Lord, you are my refuge. Yeah. So I, that just, you know, it, it gives me comfort to know that in all of the stuff, you know, he is there. He's our refuge. He watches over us. That's right. And, and I, I, I love that, that David was a flawed man who knew he was a flawed man. And so often you know, those in, in leadership, uh, uh, they, they have this, this, you know, perfection complex. They, they, they won't admit to when they do wrong. But what David writes here, I love this. Let the righteous strike me. It shall be a kindness. Let yeah. him rebuke me. It shall be as excellent oil. Let my, my head not refuse it. In other words, I want to know when I'm wrong. You know, as, as king over God's people, I'm not going to get it all right. So when someone comes along, like when uh, uh, Nathan comes along and tells a story about uh, this rich guy who steals this other guy's lamb and then says, you are the man, what did David do? He fell down and he repented. I mean, you want to talk about the altered strike from the righteous on the side of the head. That's what Nathan gave to him. And David took it and he absorbed it and he changed as a result of it. 
and he used it to draw closer to God. Mm-hmm. So I love that of, about David, a, a man who knows his own fallibilities and, and uh, accepts that and, and seeks the opportunity to grow. And, and is being willing to readily admit it when he's wrong. Right. So. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Well, I'm uh, uh, let's uh, let's move on um, to uh, Psalm 143. It's another Psalm of David. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness, answer me. And in your righteousness, do not enter into judgment with your servant. For in your sight, no one living is righteous. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have been long dead. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Selah. Answer me speedily, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go down into the pit. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. In you I take shelter. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. In your mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy all those who afflict my soul. For I am your servant. Hmm. Hmm. All right, Psalm 144. Psalm 144, another Psalm of David. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle my loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him or the son of man that you are mindful of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Bow down your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Flash forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and destroy them. Stretch out your hand from above. Rescue me and deliver me out of great waters from the hand of foreigners, whose mouth speaks lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song to you, O God. On a harp of ten strings, I will sing praises to you. The one who gives salvation to kings, who delivers David his servant from the deadly sword. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners, whose mouth speaks lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood, that our sons may be as plants growing up in their youth and that our daughters may be as pillars, sculptured in palace style, that our barns may be full, supplying all kinds of produce, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields, that our oxen may be well laden, that there be no breaking or going out, that there be no outcry in our streets. Oh, for that. Happy are the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Amen. Wow. You know, I'd, I'd like to go uh, uh, just straight to a, a few comments. Um, there was, uh, oh, I just lost it. From uh, um, Irene, 
Uh, God always hears our prayer if we come to him with a humble and sincere heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Mary Ann, how blessed we are as Christ followers that we do not have to find refuge in ourselves or in anything in our world that does not last. We have our holy God as our refuge. Hallelujah. I mean, HT, I know, uh, I know myself, and if I had to take refuge in me, uh, that's a pretty hollow place to be. Uh, but to know that we have a rock that we can cling to, we have a God who is ready to to wrap us up and to keep us close to Him. That is just so so powerful, so wonderful to know. Amen and amen. <laughs> wow. Leah. Says, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord Jesus. He is our Alpha and Omega, our Savior, our Power Healer. Everything reign forever, Amen. And I, what I love about this is just it gives that spirit of the Psalms. The Psalms are just it's just an opportunity to praise, to worship God. And this uh, uh, this comment, it's just praise. It's just Hallelujah! Praise the Lord Jesus, our Alpha, our Omega our opportunity to uh, what opportunity to, to, to celebrate him um we find one more and then we'll go on to our our next two um read gary's there gary is gary down towards the end here david is if is oh here we go here yeah. we go <laughs> If David is a man after God's own heart and no one is righteous, what does that say about us? Wow. Wow and uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it gives us so much hope that we know ourselves, we know our backgrounds, we know our failures, and we can still be considered uh, men and women after God's own heart. I mean, that, that shows the grace of our God, the forgiveness of our God, the mercy of our God, that he still says, I've seen what you've done. I was there when you did it. And still, I love you, and I'm proud to call you my kid. Oh, my goodness. I mean, how wonderful is that? Mm. Um. And he sees everything that's going on right now, too, in our streets. Oh, it is not a surprise to him. He's not caught off guard. You know, it, it, as much as we fret over some of this, Boy, he's right. still sitting on the throne. He's in charge. He's got our back. Yeah. So, and not just in the streets, but around the world, as we see what's yeah. happening in, in Iran with the, uh, the nuclear program, what we see in, in uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine, uh, what we see over in, in China and, and uh, the the uh, uh, incursions into uh, into the the Taiwanese airspace, the uh, airspace. There's so much going on, but God is in control. And I, I love what Sue says here. I so praise God that He is our fortress, our high tower, our deliverer, our shield. Oh, how we can trust in Him, for He alone is able to protect us and keep us yes amen yes well let's uh let's roll to psalm 145 again a psalm of david i will extol you my god O king and i will bless your name forever and ever every day i will bless you and i will praise your name forever <laughs> and ever Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Wow, his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. He shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. 
All your work shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look expectantly to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. I feel like there should be an amen after that. Yeah. Uh, Amen. <laughs> uh, Psalm 146, H.T. 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord, his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. And that comes from Deuteronomy 10:18. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that he is reigning now. Mm. I, I love the, the word picture, just as you know, just the, the literary side of this. The way of the wicked, he turns upside down. You know, you've, you've got the, the, the wicked... Um, they've got their plans. Um, they're carrying them out, and and even uh, we we see all around the world, and we we see those uh, uh, who who seem to have everything. They they have uh, money. They have power, uh, and 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 the the world lifts them up so high because of the. But but we see here the way of the wicked. God will turn upside down. It reminds me of of Psalm seventy three, where um, uh, Asaph. Uh, is is struggling as he looks around and sees all the the uh, 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 the good stuff that the wicked people have, and he said it almost caused my foot to, to to slip. I almost lost my faith until I entered the sanctuary of God, and then I understood. Suddenly became clear, and what became clear was essentially this: the way of the wicked he turns upside down, but the way of the righteous. The way of the righteous, uh, again, verse 8, the Lord loves the righteous. Those who follow after, the, after him, he takes care of them. H.G., is there anything that stood out to you in this? I, I think just those, those things, what you just hit on there is that, you know, we, we all see what's going on in our world today. And, and sometimes I know we, we're tempted to sit back and say, God, do you not see? Do you not understand? Uh, He's going, Steve, HT, I see it. I got this. 
don't worry. The way of the wicked, I will turn it upside down yeah. in my time and my way. That's it. And it's not your time and way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Guys. <laughs> I'll take a deep breath and sit back. Yeah. So, the yeah. Lord shall reign forever. Well, let's uh, have just a few more comments before uh, we close off tonight. I'd love what uh, uh, Kathy said here. My whole life, I felt that I had no value or worth. Mm -hmm. I was not worthy of being loved. Then I met Jesus. I just want to stop right there. How many people have that, that same four words as the transition in their life? Then I met Jesus. This is who I was before. This is what life was like. Then I met Jesus and gradually began to receive his love. He showed me in his word that I do have value and I'm worthy of love. Now I encourage others and share his love with them. I'm going to add that word in there. Uh, <laughs> I think he just ran out of out of room there. But that's that's the wonderful thing is once we are recipients of that love and we recognize what God's done for us, uh, you've done what we need to do, Kathy, and let's turn it around and share that love with other people. Um, Barbara, the Lord has called my husband home and yet is my comforter in my time of grief. The Lord is good to all. Um, Barbara, I just want to take a moment and, and uh, uh, pray for you right now. Lord, uh, you have, you have uh, brought Barbara's um, husband into your presence. You have called him home to be with you. And she is in a time of grief right now. I pray that you, you make your presence known to her, that you lift her up, that you encourage her. It's such a blessing to see that she is seeking you for her hope. She is seeking you for her comfort. Come alongside her. And I pray for, for all of us um, who are, are, are participating in this tonight as we lift her up, uh, Lord. We pray that you recognize your daughter, Barbara, and that you bless her, comfort her, and take care of her uh, through this time of grief. Um, let's uh, just uh, two more comments. Two more comments. Uh, any that you see here? Um, yeah, I see, I see one there by Christine. She says, I pray the wicked will be enticed to read revealing revelation. You know, Christine, that's been for, I've been telling all of our team for the last several weeks that that, well, my prayer now is that the, the book, let me back up, the book sellers like Amazon and Walmart and Target and Barnes and Noble and all those people have already purchased a hundred thousand copies from our publisher, Harvest House. So my prayer now is that those hundred thousand, when they hit, get in the hands of people, will read it and they'll read it in a way that they've never understood Revelation before. I, I think Rick has made it just extremely simple in, in this book to understand. And that those 100,000 will tell another 100,000. And all of a sudden we've got a revival on our hands. Yeah. Yeah. I know as, as the book says, when, when you get to the end of revelation, if you know God and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and you are right with him, having received him into your heart as your Lord and your Savior, and are following him, you get to the end of Revelation, you get there with a smile on your face. There's no fear. There's no worry. It's all good for those who love the it Lord. It is good news. <laughs> yeah. One final comment uh, from uh, Kimberly. Our hope in Jesus surpasses every vain imagination because, as the psalmist says, it is hope and a righteous, eternal, glorious God who loves us, which I think is what we just got through saying about Revelation. That's perfect, Kimberly. Great words to wrap up our uh, our night tonight. Um, well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. HT, uh, what a blessing to have you here. 
uh, with my the, pleasure. Uh, it, I'm like you. I love doing this. So, uh, yes. Well, uh, go watch. Uh, I'm sorry to all you uh, folks up in Edmonton. Uh, HG, go watch the Avalanche uh, beat up and on you. Do the same. <laughs> and uh, pet your mini schnauzer. I will do the same with my mini schnauzer here. <laughs> and uh, I will say uh, good night to you right now, uh, HT. And I'll say just a good night, everyone. Thank you. On. Well, everybody, again, thank you so much uh, for joining us. What a blessed time it is. Uh, God is good. Uh, and we see that every single day. And uh, the way that we know that he is good is the evidence all around us, but also because of his word. He didn't need to give us this. This is such a special gift. He created us, and he knew the best way to communicate with us. And that was through his written word. So we celebrate this every Thursday night uh, here uh, at Behold Israel. Let me close this in prayer. God, thank you for joining us here tonight. Uh, Holy Spirit, we thank you for the way that you moved through us. We know that you are here every time we open your word, uh, illuminating scripture to us, uh, getting it deep into our hearts. So we just praise you, God. We praise you for what you have done. And we ask that you go with us uh, until you reunite us again uh, next week. Uh, we love you, Lord. Amen. Well, once again, thank you so much. And I just uh, pray that you all have a wonderful night. Good night, everybody.